I would love to know your um, movement routines, your movement habits, all the way down to the nuanced stuff that other people might not think, you know, whether that's retracting your gut before sitting down or whatever. I would love to know your routine. And also, as he said, you know, um, flow state, playfulness, the medicine of movement. I'd love to know your thoughts on that. Absolutely. That's a fantastic question, too. I, you lost me when you read his handle. I was like, wait, wait what? Who's Squib what? <laughs> like, Squib oh, on society. Oh, shit. Like, <laughs> I, 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 I would be dumbfounded trying to answer this. But no, that's a fantastic <laughs> question. You know, of, of hundreds of journeys with plant medicines, one of the most consistent themes that's come up for me uh, over and over again when I wasn't honoring it was play. And that cannot be overstated. It is simply one of the reasons why we're here to experience and to play. And um, any time where I have not been in harmony with that has been something that's that's been just you know <laughs> either gently or harshly thrust in front of my my attention and awareness. So really, that's that's what it is now. I don't train like I used to in terms of um, the way I used to bust my ass and, and really what's required to to fight at that level but I make sure I enjoy all of it, mm. you know, and, and because I've learned so much from the podcast from different people and, and the people I've been able to train with, even after fighting, you know, like Gabby Reese and Lord Hamilton, uh, working in the pool, doing CO2 retention, Brian Wilson and Rob McKenzie, who started art of breath at powerspeedendurance.com. No affiliation with them, but these guys are phenomenal breath coaches, uh, specific to sport. You know, these things are directly tied not only to our health and our sense of well being they can create a state change, you know? So these are things that I incorporate. Um, I pretty much cherry pick the stuff that works best for me. And I've, and I've been able to make that, you know, bridge that throughout my day. So if I, I take a page out of Aubrey Marcus's book, um, and now I'm drawing a blank on it, but I, it's, you remember the title of that book? Oh, um, the, uh, something about the day, own the day. Own the right? day, own your life, right? So the, the premise of that book is how do you create the perfect 24 hour cycle? And, you know, helping them with that book, that's really something that I've tried to embody. How do I create the, tw the perfect 24-hour cycle? Now, it always changes. Anyone who has kids knows that's going to change. <laughs> uh, anyone who has a regular job or, or an odd job, you know, my job, some days I'm in the office for six hours. Some days I just take the day off and do whatever I want. So that type of, um, um, that type of freedom doesn't lead to, to consistency. And consistency and routine are not just important for kids. They're not just important for the elderly. Like we know they're important for people in hospice care. We know they're important. Structure is super important for kids. But we think that somehow in the middle of our lives that just doesn't apply. It's 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 especially in times like these, super important. Routine and ritual uh, are things that can guide us, and that leads to flow. You know, so mm -hmm. how I structure this day actually matters. And uh, a couple months back. You know, we have uh, a one-year-old now, and a few months back, my wife Natasha was like, we have to get up before the kids do. It's the only way we're going to fill our cup and start the day right, and it's the only time we have completely to ourselves. I want you So we have a sauna and an ice bath and this big barrel sauna with an 8-kilowatt heater. It'll get up to 230 degrees, so it's, it's, it's really hot, and we have a, an ice bath from the plunge, and that's really cold. And I'll, I'll get in there first thing in the morning. I wake up at 5 a.m., and I do an hour in there. I do uh, some stretching, a lot of the stuff from Mobility Wad. Dr. Kelly Sturette is, in my opinion, the best for mobility. So I'll, I'll work on my shoulders, neck, all the fascia in my face. And I do that really hot and sweaty from the sauna and the ice bath. That's my my morning movement. Then I'll walk the kids and make breakfast while my wife does that. And uh, being in nature at sunrise is, is incredible for circadian rhythm. It's incredible for peace of mind. Um, I think one of the things Richard Rudd talks about in Gene Keys is if you picture this triangle, on, on one side of it, we have meditation. And uh, there we go. Let's we'll see for the people watching. We have meditation at one point. We have concentration at the other point. And where these guys bridge in the middle is contemplation. And that's phenomenal while you're walking in nature. And even, you know, living in the suburbs of Austin, um, it's a city. I feel the city vibes. I feel you know, the electricity of the city, but we've got Cooper's Hawks, we've got Cardinals, we've got a lot of stuff that pulls me back into nature. And, and Texas is, has amazing weather. You know, we have all four seasons. We just had, we consistently get thunder and lightning storms. So that draw being outside rain or shine is one of the most critical pieces of my day. It allows me to set the tone for the day and clear my mind. And, um, 
from there, it just depends on what I'm doing that day. There's some form of movement every day. One of the things that I absolutely love from a weightlifting standpoint for people who enjoy it is if you don't enjoy it, you're not going to be consistent with it. But for people who love weightlifting and you're not um, a power lifter or a very sport specific shot putter, things like that, the book Easy Strength by Pavel Tatsulin and Dan John is one of my all time favorites. It's something that I've really been practicing where, you know, one of the key concepts in that book is if it's worth doing, do it every day. And so you, you could easily say this about meditation or breath work, sauna, ice bath. Um, but pretty much every day I do some form of strength and conditioning five days a week. And then on the other days, I'm still moving. I might go for a jog. I might do, um, some bag work. You know, I still practice Muay Thai in that sense. I'm not sparring or doing this, you know, I don't want to get any more knocks to the noggin, but really that's, um, that's where I find my joy and peace is just in moving freely. Uh, you know, we do a lot of ecstatic dances, Aubrey hosts, you know, at Fit for Service, which we'll dive into. But also outside of that, Austin's a great town for, uh, there's a pretty large community community of people that want to just dance freely and there's no judgment. Nobody thinks you're weird. You know, like I'm certainly dance weird and that's okay. <laughs> that's awesome. It to move into those spaces is so freeing. It, it just really clears out and, and, and it opens me up. So where I might be stiff and tight from weightlifting, I counter that with yoga and I counter that with dance. And I think that's been uh, such an important piece for me because, you know, I had on medicine uh, uh, a real deep dive into bamboo, you know, and Bruce Lee is famous for saying, be like water. But I saw this inherent strength in the bamboo and the inherent flexibility and mobility of the bamboo. When the storm came in, uh, we've got some really awesome 30 foot tall uh, bunch bamboo in our backyard. And the, the winds were so strong, it blew it over at a 90 degree turn, like wow. from the the base this got blown over 90 degrees it didn't crack it didn't break you know so um that that to me hit hard exactly what i want to embody and so you know if i feel like i'm a little too stiff and i'm getting really strong then i know where i'm out of balance and i'll focus more on mobility stretching theragun whatever i can get my hands on to open me up body work and uh of course the sun and the ice bath they're a big big part of that because that allows me to really get deep in these two minute, three minute stretches and open my body up with a fascial plane. So I'm speaking mostly about the body right now as it pertains yeah. to movement, but you know, I've, I've lifted weights for so long that now when I lift weights, that is flow state. That is something where it just locks me in. It's not, I'm not going for PRs. I'm not trying max effort, but easy strength has a program, you know, it's, and, and if you read that book and you're interested in it, like you'll see that that is automatic flow. It's one of the books that you know, really changed my life. And it's allowed me to continue to train through injuries and, and, you know, old nagging body parts from my long career in football and fighting. That brings me flow. Yoga brings me flow. Dance brings me flow. Playing with my kids brings me flow. You know, one of the things Ben Greenfield taught me, uh, who's been on my show quite a few times, was that at four o'clock, he's done with work no matter what. He turns his phone off or he, he doesn't even have it on him. And he teaches his kids everything they're not learning in school. He'll take them out back. They do wild food foraging. They look at different mushrooms and determine if they're edible or not. Um, he teaches them how to shoot with the bow. I mean, he does all these things with his twin boys with no chance of interruption. And that, that's been really critical for me because we live in a time where everything is fast. And, and we've got these things connected to us that... Um, you know, if we're not careful, they run our lives, absolutely run our lives. So really being able to be clear on that, thinking about the archetype of the warrior, you know, to have clear boundaries around uh, what I'm doing and if I'm fully invested in it or not have made a lot of difference in my ability to fully engage with life and whatever that is, whether it's a workout for me or playing with my kids, I'm there. My presence and awareness is there fully. And when you, when you sign up for something like that and you bring your presence there, that's one of the prerequisites for flow. And it's one of the prerequisites for play. You know, if my mind's stretched in several different directions, I have to do my best to clear that before I get to my kids. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, I'm just going to be thinking about that stuff while I'm trying to play with them. And it's all a work in progress. You know, my son's six. I've made a shit ton of mistakes with him. Um, my daughter is uh, 14 months now, and I've made far less mistakes with her. And that's just the nature of it. You know, something I tell my son is, I'm doing a much better job than my dad did. My dad did a whole a heck of a lot better job than granddad did. And you're going to do a much better job than I'm doing right now. Mm. And uh, as long as we keep, you know, 
working towards that trajectory, which we are, then we have healing. We heal generational trauma, and um, we're able to really plant seeds for the future. Khalil Gibran uh, wrote The Prophet, and his his short essay and poem on kids is one of the most fantastic things a parent could ever read because it really helps us understand what we're doing and what we're trying to accomplish as parents. Mm -hmm. Totally. That's one of my favorite poems. I remember that part. Yeah. Talking about how, um, I can pull it up. You know, we, we don't own them. You know, we, we help them along their trajectory, something about an arrow and, and we help aim that arrow. Um, what's interesting is there's a, there it is on children. Yeah. Everyone who's, uh, who's watching definitely check that one out. I've, I've spoken to some people, um, who are in the religious community who, um, they like Khalil Gibran, but they don't, talk about it <laughs> so um bittersweet make sure you all head over to benjosephstewart.com become a member you'll have access to the growing library of deeper dives where i talk about all the stuff that i really can't talk about on youtube make sure you get involved in the discord chat that's where a lot of the conversation is happening talking about new theories being able to interweave into the greater conversation that is how we awaken infinity that's our highest potential. And I just want to remind you, you are the most powerful technology ever known to creation. Wield it like an artist with a conscience.